Hello, I am FreeAZ, and this video is part of a series of videos I'm using to flesh out another One Piece theory, so you may want to watch that video first. Link in the description. I will do my best to make it so these videos can be watched on their own, but if you want the full context, you should watch the other video first. The basics are, I believe that Luffy's line in Chapter 1 about gathering 10 crewmates was meant to foreshadow Luffy meeting 10 crewmates in each sea he visited, for a total of 30 at the end of the series. I have found multiple patterns that not only share a rule, but work into another pattern I have found in how these characters were introduced, making me much less likely to believe these patterns are coincidence. Using these patterns, I was able to include every island we know Luffy will visit, or is very likely to visit giving us a roadmap to the end of the series. The first video explains the patterns I have found, and gives a rough outline of how we are going to go from 9 crewmates to 30. These supplementary videos will flesh out anything else I think will happen in these individual arcs, though having the context of the first video will help. This video will contain spoilers for up to chapter 1083, so if you're not caught up you've been warned. In my last video, I explained why I believe that after Luffy reaches Laugh Tale, I believe Oda will change the title of the series from One Piece to One Piece. The East Blue, the prologue of the series, was made to be exactly 100 chapters, because the epilogue, One Piece, was also meant to be 100 chapters. This video is going to go over how I believe the series will end, covering the Mary Joie, God Valley, and Romance Dusk arcs. In my Return to Wano video, I explained why each planet seems to have a representative character in the story, the ancient weapons being the last three planets in our solar system, and the Gorosei and Emu representing the inner planets and Earth. I'd like to start this video by going over who I believe each celestial body is in the story. The three ancient weapons are the incarnation of the three outer planets, and I believe they are Boa, Shirahoshi, and Momo. Like Shirahoshi commands the Sea Kings, Momo has commanded Zunesha, a Land King, while Boa will command Sky Kings, the giant snakes on Sky Islands. The Gorosei are the inner five planets, and each one seems to correspond to these planets. However, who is which planet does not ultimately matter. What matters more are these five characters, and their relation to Shinto mythology. Many people have tied One Piece to many different mythologies and religions, and in a way, I think they are all correct. Many different religions have sun gods, moon gods, etc. Even in Christianity, Jesus is equated with the sun. These sun gods and many religions in general have a lot of similarities, and I think Oda knows this and is playing into it. In this story about a journey around the world and seeing many different cultures, Oda played off of many different religions that had these sort of deities. People are finding connections to all these different religions with sun gods, because those connections are all there. However, in the endgame, the major focus is most likely going to be on Japanese mythology, the Shinto religion. The four most important figures in this are three gods that are siblings, Amaterasu, Susanoo, and Sukuyomi and the eight-headed serpent, Orochi. First, I would like to go over why both Emu and Vivi are the incarnations of Earth, and allusions to Susanoo. Susanoo was the god of both seas and storms, and even our own planet Earth is covered more by water than land, with One Piece's world even more so. Emu is Umi backwards, which is Japanese for sea, and all life came from the sea. The mother nature that rejects devil fruit users is the sea, and mother nature represents the earth. Vivi commanded the weather in Alabasta, tying her to storms and Susano. The fully realized version of this power is likely the shower of light that Emu used to destroy Lelugia. We know the ancient weapons are reborn every few centuries. Emu was the incarnation of earth during Joy Boy's time, but due to her immortality, she has lived long enough to see the new incarnation born. This is why Emu is so interested in Vivi. She is the reincarnation of Earth and has Emu's powers. I would also like to point out that if the Gorosei are also immortal, it is likely that the new incarnations of their planets are also on the Straw Hat crew. 
Now Susano was cast out of heaven for tricking Amaterasu, just like Luffy will cast down Emu from the holy land of Mary Joie. There is a good chance that Emu is Joy Boy's sister, and she betrayed him. It is also important to note that Susanoo was a man, while Amaterasu was a woman. In One Piece, these genders are flipped. It is unknown what Tsukuyomi's gender was, though it is assumed to be a man based off of some titles. So to play off this, Oda made Law a man, but made sure to give us Law at. His name, Water Law, is tied to the moon ordering the tides, and I think his hat was meant to symbolize the moon, like Luffy's straw hat symbolizes the sun on the horizon. His devil fruit is also the key to the national treasure of Mary Joie, and his fruit may be the only way to nullify Emu's immortality. He will definitely be an important part of the Emu fight. He is also a D-Clan member, which, as I will explain later, also has connections to the sun and moon. In my Return to Wano video, I explained why I believe Blackbeard will end up getting Orochi's fruit, tying him directly to Orochi in Shinto mythology. Many people believe Blackbeard represents the moon, due to this picture of him as a child with the moon in the background, and his inability to sleep. However, I doubt he is both Orochi and Tsukuyomi, so I believe the crescent moon is meant to symbolize the eclipse, though Oda could be making him the dark side of the moon. In Shinto mythology, Susanoo was the one who slayed Orochi, which may lead people to believe that Emu will kill Blackbeard. However, I believe this will be done more symbolically, with Blackbeard being swallowed by the sea after Luffy defeats him, the hubris of his multiple devil fruits catching up to him. Now, at Laugh Tale, the Straw Hats will likely learn about these planetary connections and their ties to the Void Sentry, and will then storm Mary Joie in order to take down the government and save Vivi, who will be captured by Emu. I wouldn't say that Luffy and Blackbeard's crews will be helping each other in this situation, but I think Blackbeard's crew will also have a hand in taking down the government. There are plenty of different matchups against the world government here, with Emu, the Gorosei, the Admirals, the Holy Knights, the Seraphim, and CP0. I won't go over most of these matchups because I honestly don't know who will fight who but I do think there will be some group battles, to save some time and to showcase how the new Straw Hat's powers interact with each other. Some of the matchups I am more confident in are Luffy, Law, and likely Blackbeard vs. Emu, Sabo vs. Akainu, and Zoro vs. Saint Mars. Luffy never kills the main antagonist of an arc, so if Emu does die this arc, it will be because Blackbeard is the one to do it. While Luffy is fighting Emu, I believe Sabo is the one who will take down Akainu, because he has Ace's fruit. The reason Akainu's fruit beat Ace's is because magma burns hotter than flame. However, I believe the reason for Sabo's blue color scheme is that he will awaken his fruit into blue flames, which can be hotter than magma, proving that Ace's fruit can beat Akainu's. As for Zoro, in Wano, he was introduced to Katetsu 2 and was very interested in it, but left Wano without it. When we return to Wano, it is likely that Zoro will finally get this sword. One of the biggest theories surrounding the Gorosei is that Saint Mars has Katetsu 1. If this is true, then this is definitely Zoro's matchup during this arc, where he will get the final Katetsu right before his final fight. I would also like to add here that I think Blackbeard may kidnap a weakened Luffy at the end of the Emu fight, and take him to God Valley afterwards. I'm saying this more out of intuition than anything, there is nothing that directly points to this happening. I am saying it because Luffy has saved many of his crewmates on many occasions, so I think it would be very emotionally resonant that the last major arc be a Luffy rescuer the entire crew coming together to save the man that has saved them so many times. This could also happen at the very end of the series, at Logtown, with Luffy being executed by the government like Roger, and the crew coming together to save him. But after the world government falls, I think people like Sabo, Vivi, and Kobe will take over the government and the Marines, so Luffy being executed doesn't make much sense. So with the world government dismantled, and at the least the slaves of Mary Joie evacuated, 
Luffy and Blackbeard's crews head to God Valley, which I believe is a sky island floating above Mary Joie. God Valley has disappeared from all maps, and has mysteriously vanished without a trace. We had a similar event already happen in the series, when Nolan found Shandora, only to have it vanish when he returned. God Valley was likely shot into the sky through a knock-up stream, just like Shandora was. We know through Cricket that clouds that are sky islands move throughout the sky in a set pattern. I believe that God Valley holds the weapon that can destroy Mary Joie, but you need to wait until God Valley is above the city to activate it. This is part of why Roger said they were too early to achieve the One Piece. It was said that the reason Roger and Garp teamed up to defeat Rocks was to protect the Celestial Dragons and their slaves. This is the reason why Rocks was going to destroy Mary Joie. Unlike Roger, Rocks did not have to wait until God Valley was above Mary Joie to destroy it, because the Rocks pirates had Kaido's Devil Fruit with them that day, and could lift the island above Mary Joie, like Kaido did with Onigashima over the Flower Capital. Kaido got his fruit the same day as the God Valley incident, and I do not think that is a coincidence. Either Kaido was given his fruit that day specifically so he could lift God Valley, or another Rocks crewmate, or even Rocks himself had the fruit, and they died that day. Now, there are at least three reasons, if not more, that Roger was too early. The first being that he needed the ancient weapons to be reborn to help take down the government and evacuate the fishmen using the Noah. The second was that he needed to wait until God Valley was drifting above Mary Joie to destroy it. I believe the third reason was that he needed to wait for the planets to align. In my Return to Wano video, I went over how the model of the One Piece world in Ohara showed the five inner planets revolving around the Earth. I think another part of the One Piece will be making the universe One Piece as well, and currently these planets are revolving around the Earth, when they are supposed to be revolving around the Sun. Now if this were to happen with the planets in these positions, the planets would have to make massive adjustments to fit into their new orbits. It is likely that the only time you can change the orbit of these planets is when they are all aligned, all in position for their new orbits. This would also be the most important reason that Oda has impressed the importance of spirals throughout the series. I think part of Blackbeard's plan is to get the Earth to revolve around the moon, which would lead to a twisted version of the One Piece. The moon controls the tides, and making it the center of the universe could lead to either the tides rising, or continuous tsunamis around the globe, making the Red Line the only inhabitable land in the world. While Luffy's version of the One Piece would have an interconnected world where people are free to travel, Blackbeard's version of the One Piece would have only one piece of inhabitable land, which would be much easier for him to control as King of the World. Which brings me to what I believe the Will of D stands for. Could be a lot of things, but what makes the most sense to me is that the D actually has three meanings. First, it is a symbol meant to symbolize either the sun or the moon coming over the horizon. Second and third, I think part of the reason Oda shortened the name to one initial is because it is short for two things, dawn and dusk. I think there is a schism in the D clan. For people like Luffy, it will mean dawn and for people like Blackbeard, it will mean dusk. This duality encompasses their ideals and ambitions, to be the king of the pirates or the king of the world. I've heard many people say that Mihawk or Crocodile or whoever would not work under Blackbeard or Luffy. What these people need to realize is that by this point in the story, Luffy and Blackbeard will undoubtedly be the strongest in the world. There is going to be a point where you are either backing Luffy for his vision of the world, or Blackbeard for his, and all of these characters are much closer in disposition to Blackbeard than Luffy. They are all much more selfish people than the Straw Hats, and will have their own little agendas and plots to put themselves first, but that will be their downfall against the Straw Hats, a much more cohesive and selfless crew. Now unlike Luffy, we do not follow Blackbeard's journey, so it is harder to pin down who will join him at the end, 
However, I do think I know some things Oda is trying to set up. The left section is filled with pirates I think will join Blackbeard before the Laugh Tale arc. Kaido, Big Mom, and Kuzan would be replaced by their subordinates after they die in Lodestar, and whoever replaces Kuzan is likely to be a member of S.W.O.R.D., and will probably sabotage Blackbeard at some point. The right half of this list is filled with members I think will join at some point after Luffy reaches Laugh Tale. I think what Oda will end up doing is adding five villains that the Straw Hats fought from each save. Who each crewmate could end up being is variable, but this seems like a good idea of what Blackbeard's final crew will look like. This would also give the story another context on reread, as the entire series was about these two pirate crews with opposing ideologies coming into conflict. Once again, I won't go too in-depth on who will fight who, as Oda could go in a lot of different directions with this. However, this would leave the second to last fight in the entire series as the final match between Zoro and Mihawk, with Zoro fulfilling his dream right before Luffy fights Blackbeard and fulfills his. Now because Madame Charlie said Luffy will be the one to destroy Fishman Island, I believe Luffy will be the one to ultimately pull the trigger and destroy Mary Joie, not Blackbeard. Before I talked about how Orochi was killed by Susanoo, and how I believe that will be symbolized by Blackbeard being swallowed by the ocean, but I would like to expand upon that a little bit more. Luffy never kills the main antagonist of an arc, and for Blackbeard I think that will also be the case. However, his fate will be worse than death. There is a good chance that by this point in the story, through some way or another, Blackbeard will be immortal. He will be cast down from God Valley, and sink into the sea near Mary Joie, yet would be even more powerless to do anything because of his multiple devil fruits. Luffy will then destroy Mary Joie, and the ruins of the city and Fishman Island will pin him to the sea floor. Blackbeard will be trapped at the bottom of the ocean powerless, unable to breathe or die for all eternity without even the solace of sleep. And with the all blue created and the universe back in one piece, I think the final arc of One Piece will be called Romance Dusk. Romance Dawn was the first arc of One Piece, and the title of the first chapter, and it is also when Luffy visited the first three locations of his journey. Romance Dusk will be the last arc of One Piece, and the title of the final chapter, with the final three locations Luffy will visit. First, directly after God Valley, Luffy will visit Sphinx Island, and the grave of Ace. I think the most obvious answer for Luffy's true dream is to throw the biggest party in the world, or some variation of that, though there are other possibilities. This island is where he would throw that party, and after things have died down and Luffy has finally accomplished his dream, only then can him and the whole crew including Sabo, Yamato, and Tama pay their respects to Ace. I think Oda is also going to use this time to frame Ace as the crewmate that should have been. After this, I think there will be a time skip of a few years, and the last two locations Luffy visits will be the All Blue and Log Town. I don't think Oda would end the series without showing us how the sea that Luffy created turned out, so I think a time skip here makes the most sense, as it would give time for the All Blue to develop. Logtown's connection to prologue and epilogue makes this the most likely location for the very last chapter, Romance Dusk, and like Romance Dawn, it will be much longer than most chapters. Oda could end the series in quite a few ways, but I think the most likely option is that Frankie has turned the Sunny into a spaceship, and Logtown is the site where the Straw Hats will leave their planet to become space pirates and explore the stars having already explored their entire planet. And with that, One Piece will finally end. There will be one more video in this series about the deaths in One Piece, but after talking about Luffy achieving his dream, I would like to take a moment to share my own dream. I am a musician and artist with dreams of opening up a donations-based record label and releasing my art for free. 
a lot of the themes in my art are similar to the themes in One Piece. Freedom, self-actualization, and overthrowing oppression. If you are interested, I have a video on my channel explaining in detail what my dream is, and I will link it in the description. My music is already posted on my channel in most streaming services, with more being worked on right now. I'd like to thank everybody for watching and supporting me. Peace.